Hi new RetroWave fans and welcome to episode 2 of Retro Motors. This month we're going to be going back to the 1970s to take a look at one of the most iconic V8s of the era. We're in Bristol, England and we're going to meet the driver who owns this beast. V8 7.5 litre for 1970 Camaro RS SS. We're going to find out more about this car and then we're going to get to drive the beast. The second generation Camaro, a real driver's car, a real American hero. Spawned from the rivalry with Ford, the second generation was lower, wider, and more importantly, even more powerful. Dubbed the Super Hugger, the completely restyled 1970s Camaro came straight out of the gate with an SS and RS package. Combined, these kits produced a car so good looking, even if you're not a muscle car junkie, you'll appreciate the distinctive nose, the iconic tail lights, and that unmistakable sleek body. Chevrolet ran the second generation for 12 years and with more variants than you could shake a stick at. Our crew were privileged enough to work with an owner and his mighty 1970 Camaro SS onset of retrograde future. You may have caught the Camaro in video games, music videos, B-movies and blockbusters. James Bond, Beverly Hills Cop 2, Fast and Furious, 21 Jump Street and even as recent as 2018 with the release of Transformers Bumblebee because even if you're a 17 foot tall alien war machine, you'd never want to be seen driving a Tesla. Hello, my name is Mark Detra. I drive a 1970 Camaro RS SS 454. I came to this country 12 years ago now, initially to do my studies and then ended up finding a job. I'm an engineer during the daytime, in the nighttime, I'm a musician. I play guitar and bass, and currently I'm starting up a blues rock band. I bought this car over two years ago when my son was born, and I decided before things get a little bit too expensive, now is the right time to spend everything I have. <laughs> They're fairly rare, and that's the only one I could find. I've always been into American muscle. I just love everything about this thing. I love how it looks, how menacing it looks. I love how it sounds. I'm not sure I'm massively fond about how it drives, but it's something I can address over time. It's a bit of a handful, but just showing up anywhere in this car, people turn around, people notice you. It has a presence to it. What have I not done so far to the car really is a better question. Everything you see here electronically has been rebuilt from scratch. The shifter linkage, rebuilt the starter motor alternator a couple of times, rebuilt the entire dash. Most of the car I've touched, really. The future for this car, and I might make some enemies and some friends by answering this question, but I'm a big fan of Pro Touring and Resto Mod second gen Camaros. So if you can imagine this car on 18 inch Japan racing wheels with eight and a half inch front, 10 and a half inch wide in the back, proper wheelwood disc brakes all around and a good suspension with two inch lowering, once I've done all of that, the car should handle very well and it shouldn't be as scary as it currently is. So then I can move on to the drivetrain, rebuild the gearbox, rebuild the rear end, and then rebuild the engine with some modifications. This naturally aspirated seven and a half liter monster should give me just shy of 600 horsepower and 520 pound foot of torque. So Mark, we're inside the beast, 454, four on the floor. And this one in particular is uh, 1970, before the fuel crisis and the strict safety regulations which they started to bring in. You could no longer have the, uh, the boat-shaped front because uh, that wasn't very safe. Um, Not massively, no. I think that was in 1974, the five mile an hour pedestrian safety regulation came in, so they started putting plastic all over the front, whereas this is just full metal, except for a tiny bit of polyurethane <laughs> which I'm not entirely sure why it's there, and anyway, it's this thick. So as far as crash safety, really? Yeah, pedestrians should run. So steering is actually fairly easy. Handling, not that much. Okay. So in a corner where your center of gravity is already to some extent not where it should be, really, and mm -hmm. then let's say the clutch slips or you give it a little bit too much means you will end up the wrong way around. Okay. Um, just through sheer power. Just, uh, yeah. just power. It's not enough grip, two tons of steel and power. The brakes are horrendous. 
<laughs> it, it did it's to be expected, really, because it's not discs all round, is it? It's, yeah, it's uh, discs in the front, drums in the back. But discs were so new back in the day that when you ordered this car, you could opt for no discs in the front either, because people didn't know that technology yet. They didn't trust it, but they, they didn't did, trust it. But wow, they, they okay. did trust drum brakes, so you yeah, you, yeah. you could option <laughs> away <laughs> your disc brakes <laughs> and just run on drums. Even with the discs in the front, they are still horrendous. Obviously, there's no nanny controls. There's there's no ABS traction control, so on and so forth. You have to be aware of what you're doing, and it's scary. I learned to drive on cars that had ABSs, so never in my mind have I ever assumed that you need to drive differently with something that doesn't. Sure. Boy, do you have to. <laughs> you know, if you can drive something like this, you can drive anything. <laughs> so Mark, at the front of the car, you said that there was like, a, well, there was the plastic element to the front of this uh, steel beast. Yes, it's just a very front strip. The very last bit here is made of polyurethane, but it's still that thick <laughs> and has no flax in it whatsoever. So okay, so they probably put it on just to kind of meet the standard, but it, you know, it's plastic, but it's still going to kill you. RS would be Rally Sport, that's a visual thing for Camaros, and then SS is Super Sport, which is a performance part of it. You can distinguish uh, an RS straight away from the front of this era because of the split bumpers, or bumperettes as they are actually called, mm -hmm. and the fact that the, the running lights are on the inside of the main headlights. The wheels, you may notice, they're mini lights. They are 15 by 8, and albeit they are not correct to the car, they are period correct. So these cars were raced in the British Touring Championships, and when they were brought over from the US and they were being raced, they were raced on mini lights. Some people like it, some don't. I love the, the rear end of it, this very swooping side view with, with the muscular rear arches and then the spoiler as well really helps with that. So I'm assuming something that would help you with uh, driving this vehicle is this huge wing uh, at the back here, which isn't really like a spoiler, it's more like a wall. <laughs> Tell us about that. Uh, aerodynamically speaking, this one actually looks like it's doing something but uh, I would assume that originally it was just a stylistic element. Okay, thanks Mark, we've had a walk and talk, now let's drive. We'll be back with more Retro Motors next month. If you've got something pre-95 you'd like to feature on the show, get in touch with us using the links in the description. To keep up to date, like, subscribe and follow us on Facebook for more insights into the world of retro metal.